Now it's no secret that comic artist turned sandwich artist turned animation vlogger The Odds Ones Out, aka James, has really blown up in the past year. Personally, when I first discovered his channel back in May 2016, he had a little over 300,000 subscribers. Now, a little over a year later, he has 4 million subscribers and he is on the way to passing up giants as his Game Grumps and Jacks films. Actually, he's close to 5 million now that I'm looking at it. Good lord. So the big question on everyone's mind is, how did he do it? How did his one package of sprinkles suddenly turn into a whole kid sized pool of sprinkles and is growing into Olympic sized pool of sprinkles. Like, this is a lot. This is a huge growth. It's insane. Well, I'll tell you the answer. No one knows. No, no one knows for sure why. It's... <sighs> but using my schmancy bachelor's degree that I got for basically studying YouTube for four years and the fact that I have been watching James's channel and growth since May of 2016, I have a theory. A madness YouTube theory. And I'm not going to convolute it just to fill my runtime to better fit the algorithm, Matt Pat. Instead, I'm going to use my actual research that I used for a 30 page undergrad paper that I wrote about YouTubers and parasocial relationships. And I'm going to try and present it to you in as little as time as possible. Right, so first off, let's talk about relationships. An interpersonal relationship is the kind of relationship you hold with people close to you in life. Family, friends, significant others, grandmas, you name it. In a healthy interpersonal relationship, you both benefit equally from it and you both have to contribute to the relationship. A parasocial relationship simulates an interpersonal relationship, but only one party feels the effects of the relationship. So even though you might feel like you and James could be best friends, you're not. He probably doesn't even know you, to be honest. Now, if you read my 30 page paper or watched my awkward lecture at my local Comic Con, Thank you so much, thank you for supporting my weird hobbies. But you would also know that I concluded that parasocial relationships aren't as evil as they sound. Parasocial relationships can be very beneficial for the socially awkward or introverted as it provides a channel for companionship that's not otherwise there. And for the person causing the parasocial relationship, they usually get more merch sales and a more engaged audience. However, as with other relationships, parasocial relationships are only healthy if both parties contribute equally to it and there's clear communication set. Quick comparison! An example of a bad parasocial relationship would be Jake and Logan Paul. They don't set healthy boundaries for their fans, so as a result, they get fans on their property all the time. Not only that, but Jake Paul is very manipulative towards them. Just the way he uses his language and every time controversy comes across him, he's always got to play the victim. It's very, very, very manipulative and it's not healthy at all for the fans involved in that parasocial relationship. Now, I actually studied James' channel specifically for my research and for the most part, he does all right with his audience. He's definitely not a Jake or Logan Paul, so mom's watching this video, y'all can relax. The only thing he's manipulating your kids to do is wear their seatbelt, which... I think you want to encourage. However, the interesting thing with James is that his parasocial relationship score varied super wildly between videos. The other three creators in my study had relatively same scores for all their videos. But for James, there was a 10 point difference between consecutive videos. Uh, mm. Your channel nearly ruined my semester long project, Mr. Oh, I have to be the odd ones out even in Maddie's study. Ooh. Anyways, I figured out the issue and I got a B plus on the project, so I'm willing to split even. Now, do you want to hear what the issue was? Hint, it's my theory on why the odd ones out grew so much so quickly. Go on, I'll wait. I'll wait for your guesses. D go on. Actually, no, I'm not going to wait because I'm not going to make my video convoluted for the algorithm. Matt Pat. So the answer is that the odd ones out audience knows he's a YouTuber. Wow, it took you four minutes to get to that obvious statement. Matt Pat would have done it in 20. Now this part of the theory mostly comes from my own experiences with YouTube. I've been a fan of YouTubers since 2010, so I know firsthand how the old YouTube fan community used to be. Since hardly anyone watched YouTube, it felt like a tight-knit community. We were in it together, creators and fans, and if you actually managed to find someone in real life who could name a YouTuber, you held onto them and you sought them out during prom to parody Jack's films, dubstep solves everything. Like, it, it was magical. YouTubers were more personal and more open, and a really did feel like you knew the YouTuber. You really did believe you could be friends with them one day. But now, everyone's watching YouTube, especially those in James' demographic. High school age and younger. I'm an outlier. I'm aware of that. Thank you very much. You don't, you don't need to say that. We're good. We're good. Kids are growing up with YouTube as a main entertainment source, and as a result, the community has just grown from its original tight-knitness. There was once a time where I could name every YouTuber going to VidCon and what they did for their videos, and... Now I went to VidCon two years ago, I'm pretty sure I had a conversation with some Musical.ly brats and I, I couldn't tell you who they were because I didn't even know what Musical.ly was. So now the kiddos aren't identifying their favorite YouTubers as potential friends or potential big sisters, idols, role models because there's just 
too many to name. They don't feel that same deep connection that us older fans of the YouTube community feel towards our favorite creators. They see their favorite YouTubers as just that. YouTubers. They're not afraid of that label like us old YouTube fans were. In fact, they embrace it and openly brag about wanting to become a YouTuber one day. Kids, if you did that in 2012, you know what happened? What's a YouTuber? The Odd Ones Out audience is representative of a new YouTube culture where the audience is aware that the person they're watching is a YouTuber, and that's how he got so successful. His audience is already built in for the YouTube mindset, so they're more willing to share videos with friends, binge watch his entire backlog to increase his chances of his videos being seen in the recommended tabs. I mean, it also helps that he makes quality content, and the fact that a solid portion of his videos feature a cartoon character that allows his audience to separate the persona from the person, and that separate cartoon persona also increases the chances of relatable connection to the audience because it's a nondescript marshmallow person, so the audience can project their own qualities onto it and thus increase their relatability to the video. That might help too, but hey, that's just a theory! A madness YouTube! Theory, also known as a tuber thought. Now, thank you for watching my video. What are your thoughts about the odd ones out? Do you agree with my theory? Do you have your own theory? Also, what's a YouTuber you want me to analyze in a future tuber thought? I'll take all suggestions, so please let me know in the comments down below. If you want to join the madness and pledge to fight the moon one day, just subscribe to this channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs>